Riley. <laughs> Hard one, yeah. Look, we think that um, Dilthorpe's ready for an opportunity a, a little bit more up around the footy. We've changed uh, our mix slightly this week from what we've had probably the last three or four weeks. We've gone a little smaller ahead of the ball. Um, and so we'll use Riley in that second ruck position. Uh, Rob plays a, a lot of time in the ruck. We're, we're mindful of that and looking to manage that a little bit throughout the season. But this will be one where yeah, we go up against, again, one of the best rucks in the competition. Uh, so it'll be a great challenge. And, and we think um, Riley, he'll actually embrace that. He'll look forward to it. He won't get a lot of gorn, we hope, but uh, Jackson coming in, yeah, that'll be a great matchup to watch as well. So does Rob press forward? Uh, at times, but no, we probably take Rob off for a spell when we can, um, depending on what Gorn decides to do in the game. Both play reasonably long minutes, so it'll be it'll be a, an interesting matchup for us to keep an eye on. Ned, looked okay out there. Ned's great. Yeah, Ned got through got through the 12-day protocol, re recovered well in the end, so um, he's a, a welcome inclusion. He brings in um, you know, that, that sort of terrier-like get after the footy, enjoy the contest style. I think last time we played Melbourne, he, he really enjoyed the contest. He went after Gorney, one of the biggest blokes. I'm not sure we'll see that again. Um, but you know, he's played more footy now. He's more mature. We, we welcome him back. Have you, um, have you asked Rob maybe to do too much this season? Yeah, we hope not, and, and you know, we're not quite at the midway point yet, uh, but it is something we're keeping an eye on. We're, we're mindful that uh, you know, it's a tough position, it's bash and crash, it's wrestle. Um, he's an ultimate professional, so he gets himself right each week. Um, at times during the week he looks like he's going to struggle and then he, he gets himself right to go. But it's something we're looking at, and at, at some point we will uh, have to manage Rob throughout the year. Is that something you're looking at going forward? Are you looking at no, we feel like we've got the ruck to back Rob up, but we also want to use Rob's weapons when he's playing. Like we've, um, you know, we're not keeping in the ruck for long periods because we have to. You know, we played Frampton last week. Um, at times, we're happy to experiment with a smaller ruck as well. I mean, we know Tex can play up around the footy and he's very good when it hits the ground. Fog as well, he's a big body that we could substitute in. So we're, um, teams have done it in the past and, and successful teams have done it. Um, probably where we're looking more at the moment is what we've got ahead of the ball and our ability to hold the ball in our front half, which is at the moment our, our Achilles heel. We, um, you know, most opposition teams would have a look at the way we play and, and at the moment our inability to keep the ball in our front half and teams moving it against us is, is the one we're looking at the most. So with Tex and Ned coming back in, how does that change that front half? Well, it helps us a little because we go on a, a slightly smaller forward line. So we get Ned in there, Sam Barry stays forward of the ball without giving too much more away. We, we've got uh, a few more small players in there with some speed and a little bit more pressure that we hope in those moments, those pre-click moments of offence to defence that, that we're able to get some exits closed, um, put some pressure on Melbourne. Um, they've been obviously the, the benchmark, they've gone undefeated to this point. Uh, when they're challenged in their back half, um, there's some opportunity there, but they've shown this year that not many teams have been able to do it for too long. How's the team feeling with the Demons being undefeated? Uh, what's yeah. kind of the, the feeling at the moment? Well, excitement is, is the feeling. I mean, um, we're looking forward to probably the ultimate challenge, the team that's got their confidence up, they're playing. Yeah, some great footy, they're, they're well connected, they're working up and down the ground. So if you look at purely the data and the numbers, uh, it's going to be a really tough night for our guys. We love that. We, we want to make it a fight, we'll bring a fight to them and I'm, I'm sure they're expecting that, or I hope, at least I hope they are. Actually, I probably hope they're not. Because um, we'll, we'll need to play at our best uh, to challenge them where they're at at the moment. What's, uh, what does Nick Murray's selection tell you about your defensive group? Adds a little bit of size. Um, you know, we, we came out of last week and we dropped away for about a seven or ten minute period where Darling got on top of us. Um, and if you, fact, if you look at that for the full game, we had three quarters where we played really well. And it wasn't all about our size down back, but we, we come into this round again against a, a quite a tall side. And uh, Ben Brown has gone out. Obviously, Jackson comes in. There's a tall for a tall, but. Um, we didn't want to be challenged down there again and, and have that 10 minute period. By no means was that last week 
the reason Dar Darling's a great footballer. We got a lot of stuff up the ground wrong leading into those. Um, so we'll continue to work on those areas. But but this week was we were really mindful of needing that little bit more size down back. As your scoring out stopping has dropped off a little bit, it's probably a one yeah. throughout the year in Melbourne played a bit more of a transition game, which again has probably been an area where you've fought out defensively. Yep. I know you keep saying you're working on it, but how do you address it against a team that's number one in the league for scoring up the centre? Yeah we structure up slightly differently. Um, yeah, we've we've done a fair bit of work on our transition as well. Um, yeah, we were able to get a, a lot more transition score last week. Uh, felt like at times, you know, we come away from the game last week and um, we quite like the brand that we put out there. Uh, we've still got work to do, but um, it was you know, slightly more ball use last week, slightly more challenging the opposition off that intercept. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, but we were up around the 10 goal mark. So, so too were West Coast, unfortunately. Um, so we can score from other areas. Uh, it's not all about stoppage, which it was probably in the first month of the season. Um, that's part of us balancing our game out. We, you know, we know that stoppage isn't going to hold up for the year. In fact, it hasn't. Um, we've now got to work on our ability to score off turnover. But more importantly, it's, it's, it's our ability to stop the score off turnover is the big one. Um, and some of that comes off our ball use. So it's, it's, it's almost this, you know, what, what is it, chicken or the egg? So, we trained a hell of a lot at Thursday. We did a little bit more today. Um, hopefully the guys will come out and implement a lot of what we're working on. Remember this game here last year? Clay Holder had his own ball, basically. Yeah. Do you look at that and, and, and the form that he's in and, and put a bit more attention into him this week? Uh, yeah, and the danger with that is there's a couple of others that will step up. The track is, you know, one who in around that footy is dangerous. But, yeah, huge amount of respect for what they can do, in, especially in around stoppage and bringing their own ball. Um, you know, Gorn gives them first use. He's, he's an elite ruck. Um, we play, I mean, we back ourselves in around stoppage. Uh, we're pleased with the way the guys have performed in there this year. We dropped away in one game. But if you look at it across the nine, we'd say eight of those games, our guys have fought pretty hard. We've been beaten at times by some some higher quality, more experienced midfielders. We're going to do our best to not let that happen this week. Um, it starts on the inside, as you said, with some of their better names. Cap on Roden. Sorry? Cap on, on Roden. One game, yeah. one game. Yeah, it was. And, and you know, we had two back. So we had one we'd managed in Tex. Um, Ned was out with concussion. So two that were out of the side, not on form, um, that the moment they're ready to go, they're back in. That shuffles us slightly again. So Ned, you know, Ned plays a little bit more up around the footy. Um, so for Ronan, we were, um, you know, we were pleasantly surprised by the way he went about it on the weekend. He, he didn't accumulate a hell of a lot of footy, but um, he understands exactly how we play. He's, you know, his teammates came off uh, talking that we can trust Ronan. He understands the system we're using. Um, he had eight tackles in the end, so. Uh, I'm really quite excited about what we're going to see from Ronan going forward. We've, uh, we'll play Medisub on the weekend, so I'm happy to let you know that one. So when it says omitted, we're, we're going to keep him in that role. How do you say this? I, I hope he doesn't get an opportunity because that means we've had an injury. But at the same time, we, we, we more than trust Ronan to come in and play an important role. So Jack will play on the weekend. Obviously, they had the bye last weekend. Um, Jacko's working on a few things. Uh, one of them is his body. He's been getting a, a, a little bit of soreness in around the quad and sort of hip flexor groin region. Um, we've managed him slightly through that, but at the same time, it's hard to get your game at the top level when you've got that soreness. So the week off, we hope, will have helped him, freshen him up a little bit. Um, he played a really strong game when they last played, and we, we ended up picking Ronan uh, for the trip to, to Perth. Uh, yeah, you could argue there that Jacko was ready to come back into the side as well. So um, those two will continue to fight for a, for a spot in this team, which is that's a strength for us to have some guys pushing from below. Has it taken longer than you maybe thought? If you worked with the Giants, first round pick, you've had another year of development. Has it taken a bit longer than you might have thought to settle? Uh, no, I mean, there's, it's always going to be different coming into a different system. Uh, we played a slightly different style. As I mentioned, he's had a few issues with the body. So getting himself to top speed, he, he's the first to admit, and we sit down regularly and talk through, you know, he'd love to have that little bit more zip that he knows he's got. 
Um, it hasn't been the case. Hopefully when he freshens up, we'll see some of it at the SNFL level and we'll be able to say, well, look, you know, that's what we're after. It's similar to uh, what we're seeing with Chase now. You know, we're able to find Chase the right position, get his confidence up, his body's ready to go. And now, you know, we're really excited about what we're seeing. So it can turn really quickly. Bob play more out of the square a bit or still rotate to the midfield or something? Um, with the forward line we got, we'd like him to be a little bit more forward of the ball. Um, that was a short one for me, no, wasn't it? Right, no worries. <laughs> Very good. When I don't want to give too much away, I'll just go quiet. Now, can you just a bit of enlightenment as to what a tantrum from Tyler Walker looks like? Did he have to oh. go out there? And Hugo looked like he was uh, as relaxed as they come. Pretty calm and cool, isn't he? I'm not sure. Texie's rubbing off too much on that. <laughs> uh, was this around uh, asking him to have a rest? Tongue in cheek, he said. <laughs> yeah. uh, a bit of a tantrum when Nixie said I wasn't going further. Yeah, he did. Um, no, it was, it was fine. It was really just a conversation. He, he wants to play. He's a competitive beast, and uh, his first response was a little bit uh, sort of ready to duck. Um, but we'd discussed a fair bit of that. You know, in the pre-season, we discussed it over the weeks preceding. He, he knew that there was a possibility it was coming. It was then just, all right, go and settle for 24 hours and we'll, we'll chat again. Um, but I'm, I'm probably not asking this week, Tex. I'm probably telling and he's been great. And he feels, he, he, was, he trained the house down last week. He came out and trained really well this week. He's, he's keen to get out there. So that's what we're hoping when it comes to uh, you know, text for the remainder of the year is at times we may look to manage just to keep that spark, just to keep his body right. Because when he's when he's close to 100%, he's you know we know what he can do. And I know Matt's having surgery today. Do you know when you might expect an update on how he's going? Well, post well, post Matty having the procedure, then we'll find out more. Um, just about where that finishes. And so from a time point of view, we don't we don't have a time frame on it at this point. Um, I'd, lo I'd love to see Matty before the season's out, but I, there's no time frame until we get that procedure done, how the surgeon feels that went, and then yeah, hopefully we can give you some more information around that.